Hello! Today I'm bringing you guys... Sewers! <laughs> it's a sewer set! Here's the video. All right, now I'll show you how to paint sewers. All right, as always, we start by looking at the 3D models, looking at all the small crevices, small, you know, brick linings. In this case, all of them are almost like walls, so walls have brick textures on the 3d printed models this time I actually put on some critical role on my laptop next to me and I really had fun painting this while watching uh, and catching up on campaign 3 so I started out with a very large amount of gray paint gray walls is what we're focusing on. I mix together black and white since I don't have a gray color and I put some water in so I can thin down the paint just enough so I'm not putting on a big blob. Now that I'm thinking about it I could have 3d printed my models with a gray filament so I wouldn't have had to paint them gray. Um, but yeah, maybe that's something you can do next time you print your miniatures. Is you can print them to the color, the base color that you are going to paint them with. Painting them gray took me a while, almost an hour to paint everything gray to get small crevices and stuff the bricks have lines as you can see so they took a while to get the paint into them but the water was a great addition to the paint because it would flow into those gaps and then that gave me the idea of dry brushing so I can get the dark gray into those indents of brick lines but on top the bricks would be a bit whiter and that would give me that contrast that brick structures have so these 3d models are curved brick walls which I love it's architecturally looking at it it's such great work and design um, so there's walls and then there's floors but these are sewers so when we look at sewers they are made for water flowing water and sewage flowing just the right way so the floors are curved as you can see and the walls are curved some of the walls have holes in them because the sewage water has to come out of a pipe and into the sewer bottoms or sewer floors so further on we'll see sort of the the holes that the water and sewage comes out of um, for the base I painted everything gray except for the bottoms of the model because I don't really need to waste paint on uh, those parts 
By this time, I was regretting using my hands to paint because since I didn't have any um, base to hold my models, I was literally painting my fingers gray. Um, but soon I will get some sort of a base to hold my models and paint um, without my fingers getting paint on them. Um, here's a model that was sort of the corner piece of the sewers and I think that's one of my favorite ones. Alright, now I start with a dry white paint um, just to brush over the bricks and um, like I said before, um, the bricks have this white um, coloration on top because I want to have a contrast between the gaps in the bricks and the bricks themselves. So as you can see, they have this white dry paint brushed over them also on top because um, you know the players are going to be looking at the model from different angles and I don't want them to look at a part that doesn't fit in another big part of this model was that all the white paint and the lines have to match so you can see that my brush only goes in one direction when I am painting the dry white paint on top of the bricks because when they line up when the walls of the sewers line up we need to see a singular paint a singular line of white so that was a challenge that I had to uh, take care of I also painted some parts of the top of the floors uh, with the white uh, dry brushing because although there is going to be a growth of green the natural growth like we talked about in the previous videos um, the natural growth still has a layer at the bottom which is the bricks um, that have the white coloration so as you can see the walls and the the floors will have this base white dry paint um, you can also see I was not patient enough to let the gray paint dry and so I am just blowing on the color so it dries and also dabbing it with my fingers to sort of take off the <laughs> the wet gray paint um, this actually worked in my favor luckily because the models were white and as soon as I dabbed the gray color out the white models showed up so I was lucky but I would recommend not to dab your paint off of the model because it would actually come off the model another thing is I don't do this on camera at all uh, but all of my models have been fixated with um, the uh, fixative uh, spray that I have um, I just have a basic um, spray paint for um, fixing the colors onto the model what happens is it just creates a coat on top of the colors so handling the models don't um, ruin the colors um, and since I know my party likes to touch my models and stuff I just make sure that they are protected from the hands of my party <laughs> um, I'm just joking I love when my party moves the uh, pieces around it it gives me the um, inspiration of making more models which is great um, so yeah after putting on the white um, dry colors I moved on to natural growth which was green I kind of had two different parts a dark gray and a light gray color and that just gives me um, the advantage of showing 
natural growth which is not predictable so it's not a singular color natural growth can be older so darker green and newer new growth which would be light green and those kind of give me um, the sort of fashioning of natural growth on the bottoms of the floors the walls etc so same thing with uh, the green growth for the walls I have to know where the walls are connected and therefore I have to make sure that the green growth levels are the same throughout the heights of the walls and so it gets challenging um, when you're painting um, natural growth on walls that are going to join together. Um, one way to know this is just counting the bricks from bottom to top and making sure you don't go over a certain line. That is actually a secret that you can easily use in your models to make sure the levels of the green paint don't go higher than a certain height. So then um, the growth was the best part because then it started giving these walls life meaning it started showing that they are not just 3d printed walls they have been through a period of time of water and sewage moving through them um, I also painted the insides of the circular um, sewage holes um, green because I knew I was going to show some sewage coming out of the holds water and sewage um, and then I also painted some green on the floors um, and the sewage floors there's floors for people to walk around on and there's floors for sewage to move through and for the floors I had to make sure that the growth was high when it comes to where the sewage water flows the most and it's sort of growing away from the water towards the walls. Um, I think knowing where the floors connect to each other and the walls connect to each other is the biggest thing. So a way to do that is you could number the walls, one, two, three, up to whatever number of walls you have. So you know that one connects to two, two connects to three, and that way you can keep the lines of the natural growth or the white, um, you can keep those in the similar plane, height, space. Um, I had to go back and redo a lot of mine because the lines did not match up and, and yeah I had to basically make the same colors again and make sure the li lines lined up. We now move into the much more fresh movement. The fresh movement being the sewage and water flowing through our sewer. Um, Starting at the holes, the holes have the sewage and water coming out of them, flowing down the slope and onto the floor. So that was something that I had to keep in mind because the lines again have to match up. Um, and then I have to also show the flow of this water. Um, so looking at how water flows through a sewage um, pipe I just sort of made some trickling water moving through a, um, or moving in a S-like path and just painted that in with a blue color I tried using a fluorescent blue because as we have seen before the campaign is based in a post-nuclear war um, or post-nuclear world and um, this makes the water a little bit not 
you know, pure. And it's nuclear water. Let's just call it nuclear sewage. <laughs> Um, so this nuclear sewage has a bit of a different color than the blue of the water. If this was just water, I would have used a normal darker blue color for water. Um, but here it's nuclear sewage. So it flows in a very different way. In case of the nuclear sewage too, we have to know that these sewers are filled with nuclear rats. These rats have weird bony bodies and large sizes, yeah, large sizes, and they like to drink the nuclear sewage. And so, how do we show that to the players in the model? We show that through paw prints, and therefore I put down some paw prints to give the players a hint that they are in danger most possibly and there's probably some nuclear rats watching them from holes around the sewers hopefully somebody recognizes the paw prints they don't really look like paw prints and I made sure of that so it's a bit mysterious and obscured but yeah, that was the last thing I did, and I think it turned out pretty good. It looks like a sewer, and um, I'm happy about that. Something that um, a lot of you would notice is that there are parts of the model that are not covered with walls, or it seems like it's not complete. That is because the sewers are an open piece so the, su the sewers open up into a cavern which is actually the next video so I hope you look at that as well because you would see where this is going anyway I hope you like this video I hope you learned something from it um, I would love for you to comment your advice below, below. Um, um, you know, it helps me a lot with um, painting, mini painting in general. I'm a newbie. I've only done, I think, about eight, or this is part seven, so I've only done about seven things in mini painting. And um, yeah, it would be cool if um, I get some advice from you. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye.